Hello subscribers and welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been a little over two years since I've installed this Mishimoto clone. I believe the brand is Spore Racing Arts. Uh, bought it off Amazon. Kind of been hemming and hawing over whether you need one or not. Um, I'm swinging back in the camp of I think you do. If you're, uh, especially if you're mechanically inclined, if you own one of these three sixes, I think this is a, it's a very finicky engine, very enthusiast-oriented uh, engine. Um, anyways, uh, I'm stitching together all the videos where I've installed the can, serviced the can, showed you how well it worked, and some pieces of my uh, intake cleaning project. And this is all leading up to my big uh, thousand subscriber announcement. So stay tuned and enjoy. And check back at the end with some uh, modern day commentary. Alright, here we go. I am going to install a Mishimoto clone oil catch can that I purchased off Amazon for 28 bucks. I'm going to install this on my 2012 Chevy Impala. This uh, can I will link to in the description has uh, 4.5 out of 5 stars, uh, about a third the cost of a Mishimoto 3 port unit. Uh, right away I will tell you it comes with this bag these crappy little aluminum push-on fittings and a couple of self-drilling screws. Throw them in the trash. What I'm going to do on the Impala here, I got, I picked up six feet of three-eighths inch ID inner diameter uh, fuel hose. I got four of these uh, worm style hose clamps. Two three-eighths uh, MIP or MPT, male pipe thread, to 3 8 hose barb. And I got a 3 8 inch NPT, MPT male pipe thread, yeah, that's it, uh, plug to plug one of the ports, because there are three, two inlets, one outlet, we're, we're only going to use one inlet. And then I purchased a 45 degree coupling. Because when you look at the way these go on, they're sticking out at weird angles. So what I wanted to do was get this to more closely resemble this. And then another bushing to put in there. So far I have mounted the mounting bracket on the car right here on the core support the little bracket that comes with it is bent at a 90 degree angle I pounded it flat and I got some hex head self drilling screws and then I just hit it with a little spray paint so what we're going to be doing we're going to mount the can right here. And you take your engine cover off and then you go back here and look on your valve cover. And what you have, you're going to want to disconnect. There's a hose here to here. You want to, you're going to want to disconnect this hose and both of these fittings. So I will do that and be right back. So I have gone ahead and removed this PCV hose. This side goes to the valve cover, this side goes to the intake manifold. I have cut my fuel hose into two pieces. I have put Teflon tape on all my fittings. And we are going to go over here to the can. 
Now with the outlet facing you, I'm going to plug the rightmost port install the rest of the fittings. And here it is after all the fittings are installed. Still not quite pointing out the same direction as the outlet, but I'll live with it for now. It is with the reservoir removed. go mounted under the hood good and sturdy we're just right above the cooling fan there real good sturdy spot our outlets are pointing ahead where I want them next up we will be modifying the PCB tube but I admit when I was pulling this off the upper intake I ended up cracking this hose supposed to fit together like that and this little foam piece went over the top of it so that'll make this end easier this one I'm gonna need to I think slice this plastic tube off here you can tell it's it's like heat shrunk on here this side is all one piece so I'm gonna put this inside the fuel line put a clamp on it this one Shave that off, stick that in the fuel line, clamp it. We'll be ready to put those on the car. I actually didn't slice it across. I sliced it right where it bevels down to get it a little, make it a little easier to get in the hose. This one went on no problem. Went in there, we're clamped up, ready to go. Try to get that one in the other hose now. A little effort, a little WD-40, we got her in there. I didn't quite get it all the way in there, just enough to get the hose clamp on there, so she ain't going nowhere. Now you notice, when you take this side off, there's a nice little tang that you have to pull back, and then this thing just pops right off. This one is in your intake manifold, down like that, you see there's those two little cam arms on there. You'll need to twist it up and pull it out. It's going to need to go in the same way and drop straight down. So your hose is going to be hanging down like that and you're going to try to not kink this line when you run it. So next up, we're putting them on the car, on the engine. All right, now we're at the car. I'm going to fish. First we're going to go, this is the one going to the PCV on the valve cover. This is going to go to the inlet. I'm going to fish this under the intake tube. And we're going to poke it out back here. I'm trying to see it here. I'm trying to see it and hold the camera. I think you can see the PCVs right there. So we're just going to snake this right in. We are clicked on. Now you can see I got her running back here. I might put a little slack in this line just to be able to move it around. A little trimmer right here. Right, we're gonna go. We're gonna fish this one through. Same deal. I will attempt this as I'm holding my phone. You know, it might be easier to go the other way. <laughs> or not, this is going.
Much easier to do this with two hands, I'll tell you that right now. Spin her down, lock her in place, and see if she wants to move. I'm going to need to zip tie this to get this to stay in place. You can see it's moving, and we don't want that. So this thing will just shoot straight back out. So I'm going to zip tie these lines together, take some pressure off here. Okay. Ah, another thing here, make sure you don't mix up your hoses. Alright, the outlet line is going to go to the intake manifold, this second line we just put in. And the input will be the one coming off the PCV valve. All right, and here's the finished product. What I went ahead and did is I wrapped one zip tie around the bo both of the lines and then put another one down the middle to keep them separated. And I made sure that I wasn't touching any heater hoses. Let me get in down there. I zip tied it to one of the electrical um, conduits down there. Kept it above the fuel pump. Yeah, the camera's not focusing. But you can see the one in the back. It's the first one I did to keep that one fitting from turning. I got a shadow here. There we go. See, now we're nice and locked in. So there we go. I'm going to update this maybe in a thousand miles, see how much oil I've collected. It's been about a month since I've installed the catch can. Approximately a thousand miles and we're going to see if there's definitive proof whether this catch can works or not. So right now I'm unscrewing the cup from the bottom here. go. Oh, look at that. Here. I'm going to go ahead and pour this into a little cup here. See how much oil I think there's your definitive proof that this catch can is worth the 28 bucks. Here is after approximately a thousand miles. This is a nine ounce cup. So let's say that's about two, two and a half ounces. It's not all oil. There's some condensation in there as well. You can kind of tell. It's a little milky. I did check the dipstick and it's down maybe shit uh, one little hair on there not enough to even register like a quarter it's less than a quarter quart down I guess it also leads me to wonder if paying extra for this Valvoline modern engine oil is worth it since I don't really have a comparison to the Pennzoil Platinum that I was using previously. Regardless of that, when it warms up outside, I will be taking off my upper intake manifold and soaking it in some purple power and mechanically cleaning those intake valves off with some B12 Chem tool. So there you have it. If you have a 3.6 VVT, LFX, LLT, LGX, whatever the new one's called, install a catch can. The one I got was 28 bucks, and it works. There's the proof. Go out and get one.
I also wanted to mention, uh, we just, uh, up here in Minnesota, we just had the polar vortex and it was 30 below zero. Right now it's about 38 above. So I got this little window of opportunity to change my oil before it goes back down below zero later this week. Gotta love winter. All right, so I'm gonna unmount this from the car and clean out the filter. Let's see if we're getting this on. Oh, yeah. So this here catch can, I've been emptying this every thousand miles. Because this is a Mishimoto clone, the Mishimotos, they, all the custom kits they sell, they're all mounted right here in front of the radiator. So you're catching cold air. And by design, they, uh, catch the condensation too it's the way they're designed um, I've seen other catch cans other brands where they have them mounted like right on top of the exhaust manifold and then that way you don't get the condensation so that being said I've, I've been dumping this every thousand miles I don't know if it's anecdotal at this point but I'm gonna rock on with it and this time out normally I spray some CRC into the intake not gonna do that this time mainly because I got the catch can and we'll see how anecdotal this is this spring when I pull that upper intake like I've been saying I'm gonna do After four months, I thought these things would come off easy. That is not the case. Well, these uh, Home Depot hose barbs have uh, proven to be tough, and I'm having a difficult time getting the hoses off. I don't want to damage them, so we'll just clean this on the car. I got my channel locks. We're just going to... I'm just going to undo this little filter here. Swing this out of the way. Paying attention to where... Oh, see, that stays in place. This little... It doesn't look too bad. We'll just hose it off anyway with some carb cleaner. So I guess I'll forego changing that goofy fitting. Well, four months in and this Dime Store Mishimoto can is, uh, can't complain. Got that off from under the car. Let's just dump that in there. After all this time, I've failed to mention that there is a little plug in the bottom of this you could put a little drain valve on. I elected not to just because of where this 
hangs down by the radiator. I just like every thousand miles when I'm gassing up and I'm under the hood. It's just easier to reach under, unscrew it. Can remounted on the bracket. And you can see the filter right there. So I've had this Mishimoto clone uh, catch can in for about 10 months now. And I showed a video of how how much it caught. It was like in November and I got a lot of condensation in the thing. And over the winter I was uh, changing it probably every thousand miles or emptying it every like thousand miles due to the path, you know, all the cold air catching it. There's really no other place to mount this on this Impala. And the Mishimoto website even tells you they want their cans mounted on the core support. But now it's been probably three months since I've emptied it over the summer months here. So let's check out what it, what it looks like when it's warm. All right, that is pure oil. I don't know, 3,000 miles worth. I don't happen to have one of those cups that I did in that video from last November, just an old pill container. But you can see this is pure oil this time around, no condensation. Oh, I wanted to add one more thing. This plug on the bottom, put some Teflon, remove it, put some Teflon tape on it, put it back in. I was having issues with it dribbling out and dribbling down on my radiator fan. Since I did that with the Teflon, I have not had any issues. So here we go. This is what that can is filtering out. You can kind of see. Eh, if I can get the light right. Those valves are closed. This one's open. I gotta get this. Man, it's really difficult to record this. You can't really tell, but if you look right down in there, you can see both those valves are open and you can see in the cylinder. And same with cylinder two. Yeah, this is going to be impossible to film this one. I guess my conclusion to all this is I really don't think those valves needed to be cleaned. And Honestly, I don't think that catch can is really necessary on this engine. I'm gonna say it. I mean, I got spooked after I bought this car reading all the stuff on the Camaro forums. There's, none of the Impala forums have anything about this engine. Just people arguing over whether or not you should use a catch can. No imper imperial, empirical, whatever that word is, evidence of whether you need one or not. Well, I just did the proof on this Impala 2012. I don't think you need a catch can. I'm keeping mine in for the fuck of it. I'll probably, if I go to sell this car, I'll probably take it out and put the regular line back in. 158,000 miles, those valves didn't look as bad as what those Camaro guys were showing on their LFXs after 40,000 miles. So I don't know if it's a Camaro only issue but on this W body Impala 2012 to 2016, uh, honestly, I gotta say, I don't think you really need that catch can. Okay, here are my thoughts from 2020. Gonna repeat it. You know what? Get one. I'm keeping it down here. It sucks having to empty this every thousand miles in the winter. But I think for just, I keep seeing oil consumption and it's it's still catching it even after I did the valve cleaning, even though the valves didn't look too bad. I'm back on the side of 
you should probably get one. I think I'm glad I kept it on there. And I'm advocating it for anybody that's got one of these high feature V6s. It's cheap insurance. I think the can is like 20 bucks now versus 28 when I bought it. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure you check out, uh, stay tuned to the channel. Stay tuned for my 1,000 subscriber announcement. Thanks for visiting. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. And uh, drop a comment below. Hit the bell, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.